Thank you for your patience and cooperation. The warning will be given in a few moments. Hello YouTube and welcome, Frick here, and we're on to my third flight in my Let's Play Flight Simulator X FS Passengers video series. In this flight, I'm going to be doing another normal flight, this time from Flying Cloud Airport in Minneapolis, Minnesota, to Duluth International Airport in Duluth, Minnesota. I'm planning on going north-northeast up there, uh, because my next flight after that, I hope to cross Lake Superior and go into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which I think will be a relatively fun flight. So that's why I'm going up there. I've already got all my frequencies for both Flying Cloud and Duluth written down, as well as my VOR frequencies, since I am going to be doing VOR navigation. So right away, what I'm going to do is go into my startup checklists. As always, normally what you would do is an initial exterior, an initial check um, check of the aircraft where you check, you know, your propeller, some, some fuel from the uh, fuel tanks to make sure there's no contaminants and do your whole exterior check of the aircraft. But again, for simulation's sake, I am going to assume that is all completed. So I'm going to go straight into my pre-start checklist. So parking brake is on, as I can see right there. Throttle is closed. It's out. Magneto starter switch down here is in the off position. I can also see that my battery and alternator master switches are off and my avionics switches are off. Also, my fuel uh, fuel pump switch is off. I do have my beacon on because I leave that on all the time. Panel lights um, are off, so we can see that everything is off right now. So what I am going to do is go to my battery switch and turn that on as well as my alternator master switch. So we have our master switches on. Panel lights, I am going to turn those on, and I've noticed that when I turn them on, my nav lights also come on too, so I am not sure why that is happening. Um, so I'm just going to turn those off, but if anybody knows why when I turn on panel lights, it also turns on my nav lights, uh, please send me a message or a comment, because I'd be uh, interested to know why that is happening. Um, so we have our panel lights on, flight controls are checked, flaps we can see that they are up and we could visually check out the window to make sure that they are as well. Fuel quantity is still in the full position as you can see right here. Um, not quite 100% but close and we'll top it off once we uh, start our flight and start loading our passengers. Fuel selector valve down at the bottom we can see is in the both position. Um, avionic switch, we're going to go ahead and turn that on right now. So that is on, and then we're going to go over, whoops, excuse me, going to go over to our avionics panel, and we are going to make sure that our frequencies are set. So right away, uh, 124.9 is the ATIS information for Flying Cloud, 118.1 is Tower, and 121.7 is Ground, and 125.0 is Minneapolis Approach. So we have all those frequencies already set. Also, I have um, 109, or excuse me, 117.3. Uh, that is going to be our first VOR waypoint. We're going to be flying to Gopher VOR. Gopher, since we're in Minneapolis, University of Minnesota, is up there. The Golden Gophers, I'm not a fan, but whatever. That is the name of the VOR. So that is the first VOR that we are going to be traveling to is 117.3. Next is going to be 112.6, which is going to be our Duluth VOR. I've already got that set. Also, I'm going to put my DME up into NAV1. So once we do get airborne and connect to that Gopher VOR, we'll have our DME information. Uh, so avionics is pretty much all set already. One, two, zero, zero. Uh, you can't change this to standby, but that is what's set. Also, I'm going to go ahead and my, um, autopilot, I'm going to probably cruise again at 5,500 feet, depending on what the weather does. Uh, I do have a random weather theme in, so the weather, um, could get shady. Who knows? looks like there are some bigger cumulus clouds out there, but... Up here where we are, it doesn't look too bad. We are going to be going north, which is roughly around... Uh, actually, I think that's uh, east. North is going to be this way, and we can't see anything because there's a giant building in our way. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how the weather is going to be. Uh, but with that, our pre-start checklist is pretty much completed. Uh, I'm going to check wet weather and the ATIS information once we get our passengers to make sure it doesn't change, as well as request clearance. 
um, and Beacon is on. So I'm going to go into FS Passengers and I'm going to start a flight. There are two passengers waiting uh, who want to fly with me again. I'm going to top off my fuel to 100 and just double check that it is in both tanks at 100. We're going to fill our cabin with two passengers. They'll each have some luggage as I guess always. Set destination since we're going to KDLH. Uh, that is Duluth International. So we'll destination hit okay. set. And we can see that it is Duluth International down there. Oh, if I cancel, that's not good. KDLH. So Duluth International. Destination set. This type of flight is going to be a normal flight. So we'll set that flight type. And we are all ready for real-time load so I'm gonna hit okay real-time load it's gonna tell us that we want to open the door which is fine so I'm gonna start Agent now check all of flight. this information Control. looks check good a little forward two. center of gravity check but lever. Check whatever flat. so oh, start flat. flight and we will hit shift E to open the cabin door I'm gonna move this blue screen up here so that's where you're gonna see all my passenger information and whatnot also going to open up my ATC window, and right away what I'm going to do is tune to ATIS. Flying cloud, airport information, echo, 1619, Zulu, wind, 180, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, no clouds below 20,000, temperature 20, 2.3, altimeter 3021, visual, runway 10, left and ILS, runway 10, right in use, landing and departing, runway 10, left and runway 10, right, CFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft read back, hold short instructions, device controller on initial contact, you have echo. All right, so we got our ADIS information, it's uh, echo, uh, winds are at 180 at 5, uh, clouds are basically going to be a non-factor because right now they're at uh, 20,000 feet. Altimeter, we're going to set that to 3021. 3021. And we're going to be landing and departing runway 10 left or right. Uh, we'll get that information when we go to ground. So I'm going to tune to COM1, which is our ground frequency, and eventually request our taxi. But first, we're going to do our startup. Um, so engine startup, engine propeller area clear which it is, no passengers in front. We're gonna crack our throttle a little bit to about a quarter of an inch. Mixture, we're gonna put that at full rich. Fuel pump, we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. Magneto starter switch, we'll turn that on. All clear, all clear. So we have started our aircraft. We're gonna go ahead and put our throttle to idle. Alternator switch, we could turn on, but it's already done. Also, we can check our annunciator lights, which we have none, and all our instruments appear into the green, so we can go ahead and turn off our fuel pump, and that is our startup checklist. So next, uh, all passengers are aboard, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the seatbelt sign, shut the cabin door, go down to my lights, and we are going to turn on our nav light, our taxi light. And we, I'm gonna double check my lights a second. Um, not turning any of those on. Yep, all right, so I think we are good. Uh, so our before taxi checklist is also pretty much completed. Um, instruments are at normal operation. Radios and avionics are checked and set. Autopilot is set and off and request taxi clearance. So we will do that. We are gonna be departing north. Flying Cloud, Brown, Flying Cloud, Hotel, Quebec, Niner, Four, with Echo. Request taxi to the active. Departure to the north. Pop at Hotel, Quebec, Niner, Four, taxi to and hold short of runway 10 left using taxiway Alpha Golf. Contact tower on 118.1 when ready. Alright, so we got our information and instructions, so we'll acknowledge that. Taxi, hold short, runway 10 left using taxiway Alpha Golf. Pop at Hotel, Quebec, Niner, Four. All right, so looking, we are right here, so we're gonna be going from Alpha all the way up here to Golf and then taking off on 10L. So that is what we are gonna be doing for our taxi. So with that, we can start our taxi checklist. Parking brake is gonna come off. And 
taxi to the assigned runway and make sure that we don't exceed 20 knots. So I'm going to slowly start increasing the throttle. Uh, we have no planes next to us, so I'm going to just go forward and start turning. Hopefully this uh, flight, I don't increw any fines because uh, I don't want to lose a lot of money again. That wasn't very good. So I think what I'm going to do is just leave my landing lights on again. I didn't get any landing light fines on my last flight, which was that tour flight. So I'm going to just keep them on on this flight again to see if maybe uh, that is what I need to do is just keep them on the entire time I'm below 10,000 feet. We're at a whole short line, as always. I'm just gonna make sure there are no aircraft approaching, which there are none, and so we are gonna cross a whole short. <clears throat> this flight is roughly around, I think it's about 150, I think, uh, miles. I could be wrong on that, though. I don't know, maybe it's closer to, it might be closer to 200. Um, uh, I'm cruising right now. Terrible taxi. This is uh, what not to do. Do not taxi at 40, not, 40 uh, knots, but you know what? That's all right. We would just want to get to our location. I'm going to slow down. There we go. rudder pedals I need to uh, adjust the tension on them because holy cow they are I just push them a little and sensitivity might be a little too high anyway we're still on taxiway alpha and there is a sign in the middle of the taxiway which we will make sure that we don't crash into because that could put a end to our flight pretty quick Hopefully we don't have any maintenance issues. This is only my third flight, and I have not checked the aircraft after the last two. I just remembered. So hopefully nothing breaks. Uh, I think it said that it was at 99%, so... And I definitely have not passed the inspection hours before I needed my next expense. Inspection. Alright, so we're coming up. Uh, we're on Taxiway Golf now, and we're getting to this whole short line, so I'm going to slow down the aircraft, <clears throat> stop it, I'm going to put on my parking brake, so our taxi checklist is complete, parking brake is on, we're going to do the before takeoff checklist, parking brake is set, fuel quantity is checked, and we are full, fuel selector valve is in the both position, throttle is idle, mixture is full rich, alternator switch is verified on, Oil pressure dropped below. That's just because the throttle is idle. Um, where are we? Alternator switch verify on. So I'm going to bump up my throttle to about 1,800 RPM, and I'm going to do my engine run-up. Which is about right there. Moving forward slightly, so I'm going to do this quick. Check my magnetos. Left one. Slight drop in RPM put it up it increases again so left magneto is good go to our right magneto slight drop in rpm and we'll put it back up again and it comes up so i'm gonna idle my throttle now throttle is idled oil temperature we'll check that and it is good our vacuum is possibly a little low on the suction gauge uh doesn't look like it's quite in the green so we might have to keep an eye on that uh, just make sure we don't have any issues. Uh, oil pressure is low again, but I never checked that when we went up. I think it, yeah, it bumped up to the green. So all of that is good. Elevator trim, we're going to set that for takeoff now. Flaps, we are going to set uh, 10 degree flaps. Flight controls are free and correct. Uh, radios and avionics, we are going to tune now to COM2, which is going to be Fargo Tower, excuse me, uh, Flying Cloud Tower on 12170. Oh, 118. I don't know what I'm doing. Request takeoff clearance. That's what we want to see. Uh, so we're going to come down to our lights again real quick. 
and we are going to turn on our landing lights and our taxi lights are going to come off our strobe is going to come on pedo heat i am not going to turn that on as of right now transponder i'm going to have that at one two zero zero and it is time to request takeoff clearance flying cloud tower papa hotel come back nine four ready at runway one zero left north departure papa hotel come back nine four cleared for takeoff runway one zero left north departure approved all right, so we will acknowledge our takeoff take clearance. One one zero <clears throat> left, Papa Hotel, get back nine or four. Parking brake is coming off, and we are going to start taxiing onto the active runway. We are on the active, seatbelt sign is on, takeoff checklist, I'm just going to double check my trim and that is good. <clears throat> Throttle will slowly increase that, 1, 1,000, 2, 2,000, 3, 3,000. Decision speed is going to be at 55 knots and our rotate is going to be at 65 knots. Still looking good right now. Pushing off a little to the right, that's all right, we're still looking good. 55, good decision, take off. It's kind of a sketchy take off, but I'll accept it. We're airborne, I'm gonna pull up my flaps now. Start increasing my airspeed some. Start trimming for a climb. Alright, that is looking good, so right away what I'm going to do is start turning to the right. <clears throat> I don't know why I turned to the right. We're heading south now. I want to be heading north. But we'll go west a little while and then we'll start heading north. So, fail on my part. Oh, not so high. Don't want to get into a stall. Alright, there we go. Much better. <clears throat> Alright, so we're heading west right now. Why I did the wrap around the airport, I was not paying attention, so that is my bad. So what I am going to do is I'm going to turn to the north. I should have just turned left, but whatever. Our vacuum is in the green now, so we shouldn't have any instrument issues, and we are going to be mostly going north. It's going to be a little to the east. <clears throat> and I can see already that I have connected to uh, the VOR that I want to connect to. So we're going to tune to 1205 or 12500, zero, zero, which I already had, COM1, and we're going to request a flight following and request Class B airspace Many transition. Approach. Papa, hotel, come back, 904 is type Cessna Skyhawk, one mile northwest of Flying Cloud 2700. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Hotel Quebec 9 or 4, Minneapolis approach, squad 5702. 5702, 5702. Not going up to 3,000 feet yet because that'll enter the Class B. Hotel Quebec 9 or 4, radar contact 2 miles north of Flying Cloud 2900. Clear through the Bravo airspace, maintain all navigation. Travel Diner, one, five, All right. Departure. Roger. Altimeter, so we can go two, into one. the Class B airspace right now. Climb and maintain flight level one eight zero. 
I'm gonna acknowledge my radar contact. So I'm gonna bring my throttle back up for my climb. <clears throat> and we are gonna be going up to about 5,500 feet. And look at that, we actually already connected to our Duluth um, VOR, so we don't even need to fly to the uh, Gopher one, which is awesome. I was not expecting to get that right now. So we can see that we need to roughly fly it around a 020 heading, so I'm going to set that in my heading bug. Right there, and because of that, I am going to turn on my heading hold. And we'll slightly turn towards that. <coughs> Perfect. All right. The reason uh, we had a request clearance into that uh, Bravo airspace, I'm going to quick show you right now. So you're going to lose sound. I'm going to bring over a Firefox window and the aeronautical chart for the Twin Cities area. So what you can see is here is Minneapolis right here. I tried to point at it with my screen. Uh, so this is Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, what you can see is all these rings around it. These are actually the Class B airspace rings. So coming in, it, we were right here in Flying Cloud, and you can see that we're inside this ring right here where it has this 100 over a 30. Uh, what that means is this Class B airspace starts at 3,000 feet and goes up to 10,000 feet, and then once you get out here, it goes uh, in this ring, it's 4,000 feet to 10,000 feet. Except right here, there is this little wedge where it is 6,000 feet to 10,000 feet. So this is our airspace. Uh, so that is why we could not climb into uh, 300 or 3,000 feet until we got cleared into the airspace. Because um, you do need clearance in order to fly into a Class B airspace. <clears throat> we are still climbing out. Uh, we're, we got 1,000 feet left in our climb. Right now I'm just double checking my uh, checklist and everything is looking good. Right over here, this should be Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. If we look out of our airplane, should start to see uh, downtown Minneapolis-St. Paul. I guess that's right over here. So, nice flight. Nice uh, location to fly. Rather Bravo large airspace. city. <clears throat> Got another 500 feet in our climb, and then we will start to level out, and we will turn on the autopilot at that point at uh, 5,500. Uh, that is going to be our cruising altitude for going north northeast to Duluth International Airport. We can see that we are climbing at about 80 knots, uh, which is exactly what we want to be climbing at have our flaps up and we have about another 20 250 feet just gonna look over at Minneapolis st. Paul Airport I just want to make sure there are no aircraft coming because they did tell us to fly our own navigation we are still VFR, however, so we do have to do our own collision avoidance all right, so we're about 100 feet to level out. So what I'm going to do is start dropping the nose. We'll then slowly start increasing our airspeed, which is what we want to do. That's also going to lean back my mixture a little bit. Just because we are at a higher altitude, 
contact Minneapolis approach on 126.5. For us, 126.5. Climb and maintain 15,000. Pacifica 636. Cessna 116. Traffic is 2 o'clock, 4 miles at 4,500. Cessna Skyhawk, report them at night. Pacifica 633. Let me talk. Center on 133.7. Orbit 8114. Turn right, heading 360. Trim wheel is acting up. Cessna 358. Traffic is 10 o'clock. I do not mean to be doing this. Cessna Skyhawk, report them at night. Trim doing it. Level off. All right. Acknowledge handoff. One two six point five three. Papa Hotel. Get back. Nine hundred four. Turn right, heading zero three zero. I am blowing my airspace or my altitude that I wanted. Base zero eight Victor. Climb and maintain one six thousand. Climb and maintain climb six thousand. Base zero eight Victor. Minneapolis approach, Papa Hotel, Quebec 904, with you. Papa Hotel, Quebec 904, Minneapolis approach, Roger, altimeter 3021. I don't know if my autopilot is acting up, so I feel like I am fighting things. Contact Minneapolis center on 3021 still. Alright, so we're leveling off now. This is what I want to do. Minneapolis approach Cessna November 74216 with you. Cessna November 74216 from Minneapolis approach. Roger. Altimeter 30021. I think what was happening is I was running into a little bit of lag. And so when I turned, when I was uh, trying to do my trimming, it was a little behind, so I kept over correcting both ways, and I think that's what's happening is I was running into a little leg. As you can see, we're over the city of Minneapolis, St. Paul, um, and so my camera isn't even moving as fast, and I think that's what was happening. I was just running into some leg, so every time I tried to trim, I was overcompensating because it wasn't taking it right away, and I wasn't able to really feel out the aircraft because of the leg. Minneapolis St. Paul is a, Minneapolis St. Paul International is a pretty busy airport. It is Class B. And that is why we have to listen to all this calm. Uh, but hey, when, when don't you have to listen to calm? Anyway, we are straight and level. We are flying at 5,500 feet. We are on a heading of about 022, I guess, uh, which is roughly close to what we want to be on um, to head up to Duluth. We're squawking the code that Minneapolis Approach, or Mini, yeah, Minneapolis Approach had given us, even though now we are on Minneapolis Center. Uh, we have our heading hold on, excuse me, and our altitude hold. Everything appears to be in the green as of right now. We have good fuel levels. Flying a little slower than I would like to fly. I'm gonna, uh, we're only flying at 2300 RPM. I'm going to bump in the RPM a little more. I want to try to at least get to 100 knots. Also, I'm going to come down here, make sure our fuel pump is off. We're going to, like I said, keep that landing light on. Um, engine instruments are checked. Engine temperatures are stabilized at cruise. I'm doing my cruise checklist, by the way. Fuel quantity has been checked. Radios are tuned and set. Autopilot is checked and set. Lights are as required. Engine instruments are checked. So all our checklists are complete. We are doing... Uh, good right now and we have actually I can switch my DME now too as well uh, we have 115 nautical miles to Duluth International Airport so I was relatively right it is uh, probably gonna be about 125 uh, miles to Duluth so 
I'll keep you guys with me for a little longer, just so you can kind of see the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Nice area. A little high, it's a little hard to see. Hopefully I'm not giving you like a headache by spinning around so much. That's for me. station down here or something where all those uh, tracks are. I wonder if this is the Metrodome or where the Metrodome used to be, even though it no longer uh, exists because they are creating a new stadium for the Minnesota Vikings. You can see uh, the lovely, what, Missouri River? Right here. Starts in Minnesota and goes all the way down. Exits into the Gulf of Mexico. It's one of the biggest rivers in the U.S. If not, it might be the biggest river in the U.S. My geography is not 100%. Piper, Niner, 5 November, have the traffic. Anyway, our flight is going good, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting the video shortly. Um, again, if you guys do want to see the whole flight, uh, let me know in the comments or message me uh, that you do want to see the whole flight, and I can definitely make that a possibility. Uh, the reason I, I cut it short is just because uh, like this flight is going to be um, what uh, almost two hours, hour and a half, uh, and so I don't know if you want to sit and watch for an hour and a half as we fly straight and level all the way up to Duluth. However, if there are any changes, I will be monitoring everything. If there is any changes or if anything happens weather-wise or something like that, I will be bringing you back. Uh, otherwise, I will bring you back if I see something cool or when we start uh, to approach Duluth for our descent. Um, Again, thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll be back in a little while. Hello, everybody. I am back. Um, what just happened right now is uh, we left the Class B airspace, so we are no longer transitioning in it. In it. So they told us to squawk 1200, and we are also supposed to tune to Minneapolis Approach now on 121.2. So I'm going to turn my radio to 121 decimal 2 and change that to the active. And now we're going to request a flight following uh, in which they'll give us another squat code. Minneapolis approach, Papa Hotel, Quebec, Niner 4, is type Cessna, Skyhawk, 1 miles south of Mike Yankee, Niner 0, request flight following. Papa Hotel, Quebec, Niner 4, Minneapolis approach, Squawk 6405. Minneapolis approach, Cessna, November 5, I screwed that up. 6, 4, 0, Cessna, November 5, 1, Niner 3, Kilo, Minneapolis approach, Roger, altimeter. Three zero two one. Squawk six four zero five. Papa Hotel Quebec Niner Four. Papa Hotel Quebec Niner Four. Radar contact five. one miles east of Mike Yankee Niner Zero Five Thousand Five Hundred Altimeter Three Zero Two One. Three Zero Two One. And we'll acknowledge that. Bravo. Traffic is nine o'clock. Four miles. Too much radio chatter. Bravo. Report them in sight. Copy. Papa Hotel Quebec Niner Four. Alright, so we have requested our flight following with 
Minneapolis approach. Uh, eventually, as we get further away from Minneapolis, they will tune us or have us tune to uh, Minneapolis Center. Uh, but as of right now, we are still cruising at 5,500 feet. We are basically out of the Twin Cities now, um, heading north. Uh, if I bring in my aeronautical chart, uh, right here was that Class B airspace ring ring that we were in and so we are somewhere around up here because we've been flying from here at about a heading of roughly probably around right here so um this is around the area that we are we crossed past this line right here which is that class b's class b airspace line uh and that is what we went out of so that is why we are transitioning out of that class b airspace and now had to contact uh, minneapolis approach for a new squad code uh, so that is what is happening in the flight uh, i'm just going to keep us uh heading towards duluth i will bring you back again if anything changes uh in the next 82 miles before uh or I guess in the next roughly uh, 70 miles before we start our descent and uh, approach nine, into seven, Duluth. Alright everybody, I am back. Um, I just fastened my seatbelt sign and passenger adrenaline and fear is slightly increasing and they're getting new nervous due to the weather condition. Uh, I assume the weather condition they are assuming is that we are in rain right now. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but we we are in rain. So I'm assuming that is why they are getting nervous. Um, looking around, the weather is getting a little dicier. So what I am actually going to be doing right now is I'm going to uh, descend a little bit because we can see these storm clouds ahead of us. I'm actually going to start to uh, bank to the east a little more too. So I don't fly through these and we are going to turn our altitude hold off. And we're going to pull down our throttle some and start a descent. I want to kind of avoid all these clouds. Uh, descending a little faster than I would like. But there is nothing to fear. I mean, we still have really good visibility. Uh, the winds and there ha have not been anything. The turbulence has not been anything. Uh, we just have a few of these uh, rain shower clouds ahead. Uh, so we might have to unfortunately fly through them. But <clears throat> like I said, uh, it is nothing severe as of this point. See the rain passing through though. So still descending. What I'm going to do is I'm going to descend to about 3,500 feet just to make sure that I am well below all of these clouds. <clears throat> uh, so you can see that we are not descending very fast. Um, I've just got the throttle pulled back a little bit. Um, it'll help us conserve some fuel too by doing a slightly slower descent. Uh, also, it makes it nice and comfortable for the passengers as they don't have to deal with quick uh, pressure changes in altitude. Um, so that is another reason for a relatively slower descent. Not that descending uh, 2,000 feet is going to do a whole lot to the passengers. I'm just trying to make it as stable as a ride as I can. Um, I'm trying to look for pockets of clean air. I'm thinking that we're just going to have to go past all this unless I went all the way around, which I really don't want to do. So I'm going to start uh, lining up my VOR again uh, with uh, where we need to be heading. And I'm going to start turning back that way. And that will make us descend a little quicker. Just that's how physics go. Because lift is generated <clears throat> from planes being straight and level. When you start to bank, it what makes you turn is your wings are now, you have one wing higher than the other one. 
it's still generating lift, but it's pushing you in the direction you want to turn. However, that lift that is causing you to turn isn't as great as keeping you up, and that's why you slightly start to descend uh, in a turn. Because uh, you're not generating as much lift as you would. Vertical lift, I should say, uh, as in straight and level flight. You are, you're generating the same amount of lift, it's just the, the direction of that lift is not entirely vertical, and that is why you slightly descend. So we are still <clears throat> descending. We're at 4,500 feet. We have another 1,000 uh, feet to go. Hopefully this weather doesn't continue to pick up because I don't want to have to deal with severe weather at all for uh, this landing. Uh, but we will see. Uh, it looks like the winds have picked up a little bit uh, in our DME. You can see that we're only going 91 knots and we're heading basically straight towards it and we're showing it about 100, 105 knots. Uh, so we must have a little bit of a headwind uh, right now which is slowing us down. <clears throat> we are getting closer though. We are only 40 nautical miles away. Checking over everything else. Contact we can see that we are in the green. Our fuel is still good. All our gauges are looking good. Our RPM is lower just because I pulled back that throttle uh, and turned off my altitude hold. I'm going to actually put my autopilot down to 3500. So when I do get closer to that, I can level off. <laughs> Take a look around outside of the air. I don't know what the passengers are complaining about. I think the pitter-patter of the rain against the window is quite lovely. It's a nice spring day for flying, <laughs> aside from the rain, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, this is just a few isolated rain showers, so they have nothing to fear. We are doing just fine. Also, since we are descending, I'm actually going to pull over Sky Vector right here. Here's our aeronautical chart. We're going to be in this Green Bay sectional. Uh, I'm going to zoom out, and we can see that the highest terrain getting up to where we are is around 2,200 feet, so at 3,500, we should have no issues. <clears throat> Descending a little more. Uh, I also, what I have been doing, which you haven't seen, is I've been adjusting my mixture slightly as we've been descending. Um, just continuing to keep it lean, so lean properly, so that way uh, the engine is functioning at full performance. Uh, I don't have it at full rich because we are not that low. I do have it slightly leaned, but not nearly. Um, I shouldn't say nearly as much as what I had. Uh, one second, I got it in my head. Zero, zero, 008 and that's actually gonna make us go a little lower than I wanted to go so we're gonna have to climb back up <clears throat> slightly can't quite see Lake Superior yet we are basically coming almost straight from the south, not quite. Uh, might, maybe that is it up here, uh, where it's blue in the horizon. That might be Lake Superior coming up. Because we should see that. That'll basically be right off of the, the nose of the aircraft as we get a little closer. So that might be it right up here. Lake Superior, the biggest uh, freshwater lake 
and North America. It might be all of the world. I'm not sure. I know it is in North America. You guys are better at geography. Do let me know. All right, so we are basically close to our 3500. We're still a little shallow, but it's good enough to turn on my altitude hold. So we'll be flying at 3500. Um, still looking around at this weather. It's still raining, but it's, again, I, I believe just these isolated uh, sprinkles. Wasn't actually expecting to fly into any weather today, so this makes uh, the flight a little more interesting, a little more fun. Um, always fun to get your adrenaline going, passengers. What do you think? Seatbelt sign, I'm going to keep that on probably for the duration of the flight just because uh, there is some weather. So because of that, the chances for turbulence are raised, especially with some of these uh, isolated storms. If, if these are building, we, you know, we are in a, it's only uh, 1230, so uh, we are in the mid-afternoon, so I don't know if the game actually does it, but there would be some daytime building of the clouds due to daytime heating. Um, brings the moisture up and will help uh, create some some bigger storms. So I don't know. Again, I don't know if the game actually is smart enough to to have effects like daytime heating do anything with your weather. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, we are flying now at 3,500 feet. Uh, we have another 30 nautical miles before we have to, um, before the airport. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the video one last time, uh, and I will bring you back probably when we're about another 10 miles closer, maybe 15 miles closer. So you can watch the uh, final descent and uh, landing at Duluth International Airport. All right, everybody, I am back. Uh, we're 18 nautical miles away from the airport. Uh, you can start to see Lake Superior off in the distance out here, uh, and especially the little bay area in here. The airport should be relatively right around here. Uh, there are two main uh, runways on this, runway 9 and 27, or runway 3 slash two one uh so i'm gonna cancel my flight following and contact their tower for landing all right so we got one two zero zero nearest airport list is duluth international so I'm going to tune to their ATIS, which is 1241. Oh no. 124. 1. Turn that to my active quick. Oh, that's 1247. Sorry. Alright. Airport information, Victor. One seven four one Zulu. Wind one seven four at five four at five. Ability greater than twenty miles. Sky condition ceiling six thousand six four hundred. Broken. Temperature minus seven two point minus two two minus altimeter three zero one five. ILS runway minor in use. Not landing and departing. Runway minor. EFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have Victor. Duluth Airport information. X-ray one seven four two Zulu. Wind Just switched. One eight one at five. Visibility greater than twenty miles. Sky condition no clouds below two zero thousand. Temperature minus seven two point minus two one. Altimeter three zero two one. ILS runway minor in use. Landing and departing runway minor. EFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have X-ray. All right, so we had Victor, and it automatically switched to X-ray. So we have X-ray. So we're going to tune to one one eight three zero, and that's her tower. And we're going to request a full stop landing. Hotel Quebec Niner Corp, Duluth Tower, by right base, runway Niner, 
Right base, runway niner. Flight right base, runway niner. Papa Hotel, Quebec niner four. Three zero two one is what it was, so we're gonna change that. Viper zero four seven. And we need to start a descent. I don't even know where the airport is right now. is this airport I have never flown up here before so if I seem lost it's partially because I am as I have never flown uh, to this area before but I have been to Duluth it is a very nice area there's a lot of hills Lake Superior off in the distance it's a it's a beautiful beautiful city if you guys have never been to Duluth and want to go to to a beautiful location I would recommend it all right, we're still 11 miles away. We gotta enter uh, right base, so we will be entering uh, our right base. So we gotta have to have the airport off to the right. I'm going the wrong way here. Turning this way some. Hopefully you can see this Air Force in. Because I have not found it. It might be out here. This might be it out here. We're still 10 miles away. Oh, it might be out here. Well, this is embarrassing when you're not able to find the runway or the airport that you are supposed to land at. But this is not something that I am going to uh, tell my passengers, whose satisfaction went up to 98%. The rain did stop. Uh, the whole time, uh, it, there, there was nothing, any anything serious. I was looking for uh, lightning the whole time. I never saw any. Uh, I did hear some thunder, but again, I don't know if that's just the audio of the game or how realistic it does um, its weather sounds. It is Rex uh, we're real weather environment as well, so um, it does have its cu custom sounds and whatnot, so I'm not sure exactly what uh, happens. This might be the runway or the airport right up here. Gosh, I wish I knew where this <laughs> airport was. I have no idea where I am. But that's all right. <clears throat> we will find it eventually. I believe this is going to be it. We're only 10 miles away, but we only have an 80 knot um, speed, so we do have that that wind. The wind is at 181 at 5, so it's actually out of the south. So I don't know why our uh, ground speed whatever whatever I'm just gonna keep flying and hopefully find this airport and land uh, because there is a airplane a Boeing 737 800 right there at only 1500 feet I would assume this is the airport. one four five zero go around so we have visually contacted our Going airport Pacifica 1450, contact Duluth, approach on 125.45. Going to 125.45, Pacifica 1450. <laughs> I find it funny that they uh, made the Boeing 737 do a go around on this uh, airport, <laughs> but hey, uh, what do I know? Okay, so right here I can see the airport now. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Um, right here you can see the Vassier Pappy lights uh, for runway 3 which is going to be right here so we're going to be coming in almost at a straight east-west uh, runway runway 9 where this uh, 
Piper Cherokee, I think it is, right now is in the process of landing. Um, so that is where we're going to be going. We're going to be uh, just turning slightly to the north so we can enter on the right, right base per our uh, directions or instructions given by Duluth Tower. I do know, uh, since I do have uh, the airport diagram, I'm going to quick show it to you. Here is the airport diagram. Uh, as you can see, runway 9 is big. It is 10,000 feet long and 150 feet wide. So it is a big uh, runway. We'll probably land here and probably get off even at A1. So, uh, and then start our taxi, which I'm guessing, I'm not sure, not U.S. Customs Terminal, maybe. Um, so I'm not sure where they're going to have us park. But that is the uh, diagram for where we are going. I'll bring back the audio so we can hear it. Can start turning a little more towards the airport right now. I'm glad that the weather died down. Um, although it would have been kind of fun to, to land in the rain. Whatever. Curious where that Boeing uh, 757, I think it was, or 737 went. Oh, here you can see Lake Superior. Um, hopefully, next flight we will be flying over that. That is my plan, at least. I've kind of stabilized my height. I am low. I am uh, 2,700 feet, roughly. The airfield is at 1,500 feet, roughly. It's actually 1,428 where we're going to be landing. So we're going to try to enter at, oh boy, what was that? Stop that. Don't do that aircraft. Uh, at about 2,500 though is where we're going to be coming in here. There's that Boeing, so I might have to uh, go around for that. Assuming it's coming in for a landing. It's actually increasing its altitude, so who knows what it's doing. I am just going to keep on coming in my, my right base and hoping I can land instead of having to do a go around because that is something I don't want to do right now. I just want to land and finish this flight and hopefully make some money doing it. Our descent checklist, uh, we kind of descended a while back. Uh, ATIS information is checked, fuel selector is at both, altimeter is checked and set, radios are set, descent speed uh, was at 100 knots, we're roughly at 90 knots right now. Um, so a lot of that, some of that was non applicable to us. November 71042 is 8 miles west, inbound ILS, runway 9 approach. Beach, November 71042, Duluth Tower, fly straight in, runway 9 Altimeter 3021. Make straight in runway 9. Alright, so you can see the glide slope right here, and we are on it. Papa Hotel Quebec 9 Corp cleared to land runway 9. Alright, we got our clearance. Clear to land runway 9. Papa Hotel Quebec 9 Corp. <clears throat> so our approach checklist, uh, we're not doing anything for ILS, no localizer or glide slope. Landing lights, uh, we should still have them on because I never turn them off, uh, which they are. Fuel pump, we're going to put that to on. Mixture, we're going to go ahead and put that to full rich. Since we are uh, getting here, I'm going to pull back the throttle a little more. going to trim and bleed off some of our airspeed. And once we hit a little slower, I'm going to put in my first detent of flaps. And so right here, first detent of flaps is in. We're going to start making our final turn. Increase our uh, speed slightly. Sorry if I start kind of rambling. It's hard to talk when you're paying attention to uh, trying to fly. I'm going to put 
put in my second detent of flaps right away now too. Pull back my air or throttle a little bit to bleed off slightly more airspeed. Trim. Kind of a lot of things to, to think about when you're coming in for a landing. <clears throat> All right, lining ourselves up with the runway. I believe we have a little bit of a south wind. What was it? One eight one. So it is going to want to push us to the north of this uh, runway. Only at five knots though, so it shouldn't be much of a factor. Uh, we are coming in high though, so I need to really pull back some airspeed to see if we can, or throttle to see if we can get back onto the glide slope. I'm probably only going to do two detents of flaps on this landing, uh, which is what we have right now. Our airspeed is pretty good, so I'm not concerned about that. We want to be at about 65 knots. We're slightly fast, but it'll bleed off once we uh, get right down by touchdown. Finally, we have a light on the Pappy lights uh, where we're entering the glide slope, but man, that glide slope <laughs> makes it seem like we're gonna hit the trees. Off a little to the right, I was hoping the wind would beach carry me a little more. Go around. Sorry, Beechcraft, I made you uh, miss. Wind around, Beach 042. Here we go. Beach 042. Contact the loose approach on 125.45. Pull back the throttle. 125.45. Beach 042. And we are landed. Putting up my flaps right now. Off Hotel Quebec 9 or 4, exit runway when able. Breaking, breaking, breaking. Alright, we're slow enough, we'll exit right here. Papa Hotel Quebec Niner Corp, contact ground on 121.9er. 121.9er, going to 121.9er. Alright, 121.9er, uh, whoops. We'll acknowledge that. Uh, I automatically tuned it, so we'll just retune it so I'm not doing that again. We're going to taxi to Gates. Alright, so we're going to be going on Alpha 1 to Alpha all the way to the gates. Um, I see the terminal, so we're going to acknowledge that clearance. Taxi to gate Golf 7 via taxiway Alpha 1 Alpha Papa Hotel Quebec 9 or 4. And that's gate 7. We're landed. I am going to go into my taxi to ramp checklist. Uh, strobe light, we're going to have that come off now. Flaps have already been retracted. I did that after we land. Taxi lights are coming on. Landing lights are coming off. Speed, we're not going to go any faster than 20 knots. Transponder is at 1200 still. Elevator trim, we're going to have that. Uh, so it is roughly at takeoff, right about there. Avionics and radios are as required. So we'll finish our... All right, we got a hold. Hold position, Papa Hotel, Quebec, Niner Four. I don't know what we're holding for. Oops. I'm not seeing anything on the taxiway. I see big plane up there. Nothing on Alpha. Unless they're wanting me to wait while this beach craft lands, which I hope not because he's quite a ways out there. Or that's a Cherokee. 
Uh, hopefully my landing wasn't too bad. I was hoping to glide a little more before I touched down, but that did not happen. I didn't give it enough of a rotate, so it was almost, uh, I don't know. It was an all right landing. Also, I was expecting the wind to maybe push me a little north, so I did come up uh, on the south of the runway a little bit, but whatever. We will deal with it. The passengers are happy. They're at 98% satisfaction. Fortunately, that weather dropped us down a bit. I don't know what we we're waiting for, so what I'm going to do is actually pause the video and have you guys come back when we are approved to taxi again. All right, we just got cleared to continue our taxi. I never saw anything, so I don't know what we were waiting for. Although, I was looking outside the window because there is a Boeing and a Piper, which are basically uh, <laughs> right, right next to each other at the exact same altitude. How they are not crashing, I don't know what is happening here. Apparently, there's an invisible Piper right there. Or I can kind of see something. I don't know what's going on at this airport right now. Whoever is running this is silly because that to me is a very hazardous situation <laughs> having a Boeing and a Piper basically co-altitude, co-airspace and everything. That <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But whatever, I'm safe on the ground, that's all I care about right now. And we care about getting our uh, passengers safely onto the Gate 7 where we're supposed to go. Ready to copy IFR clearance to Minneapolis. Orbit 1590 is clear to Minneapolis. Going Airport straight, I'm going to quick fly runway heading. While we do this, taxi, uh, look at what's happening here. Oh. My pedals are backwards now since I'm, uh, on the outside. I'm trying to steer this way. So apparently that Boeing just overtook the Piper for the landing. Boeing has to go around again. Oh, I would be so furious if I were passengers on side that inside that plane. That is ridiculous. All right. <clears throat> Whatever. I'm just going to keep on taxiing and try to get back onto this line a little bit. Alright, so... Let's taxiway Alpha. following taxiway alpha otherwise that's why i had a turn is the, the signs were telling me to follow alpha otherwise i would have gone into that little parking area there i'm gonna bust my uh ground speed that i'm supposed to taxi at a little bit but that is all right Up here is where the gates are. I can kind of see the terminal, it looks like, right here. I'm pretty sure that's where we need to go. Like I said, I've never flown to this airport before. We're going to be crossing a runway ferry pretty soon. Um, am I going the right way? Yeah, that's Taxiway Charlie. Which I don't want to take. So here is runway 21-3. Slow down at that. As always, and do what we're supposed to do. LS Ground, Pacifica 6851, Wind November, ready to Not seeing anything. IFR. There's a radar. Pacifica 6851, taxi to the hold short of runway 9 using taxiway Alpha, Alpha 4, Charlie Alpha. Contact tower on <coughs> one one eight point three when ready. Alright, I don't know if it has 
the gates labeled. I don't know where this plane is going either, but hopefully it's not going where I am. Piper, November 6, 2, 3, 5, hotel. Looks like it is, so I'm just gonna Piper, six, get out of its way. Get away from me! Stop! Stop taxiing towards me! Alright, I'm gonna turn on progressive taxi, because I don't see gate numbers. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking via Taxiway Alpha 1 Alpha Charlie Delta Piper 35 Hotel. Gosh. This airport is run by goons because they're having airplanes almost collide in the air. They're having other airplanes come directly at me when I'm trying to taxi to my gate position. And my all the vehicles are invisible. So I have no idea what's going on. And the gates aren't labeled. How am I supposed to know this is gate 7? Whatever. We are safe. And that's all I care about. We are parked. We're safe. That's where we are. I'm going to go inside and we're going to turn this aircraft off and be done with this. So shut down checklist. Parking brake is on push period to do that throttle is down to idle fuel pump oops is off avionic switch is off taxi lights are now off nav lights are now off pedo heat by the way i did turn on my pedo heat i forgot to mention that but i was looking at my uh temperature gauge and it said 36 degrees I don't know if that's accurate or not, but we were in clouds and rain, and if it's 36 degrees, I don't want to have to deal with potential icing, so I turned on my pedo heat. Mixture fuel flow is going into the cutoff position. We hear our engine shut down. Our magneto switches, if I can grab them, are going off. Beacon, I'm going to keep that on as always. Panel light is coming off, and we'll turn off that nav light again because, again, Every time I do my panel light, my nav light goes on. So if you guys do know what's going up with that, please do let me know. Battery switch and alternator switch are off. So our aircraft is shut down. So what I'm going to do is hit shift E to open my door and let my passengers unload. <clears throat> 25 more seconds for that. Securing the aircraft, uh, parking brake verified that that is set throttle is idle and all switches will just verify that they are off which we can see that they are all off aside from my beacon which i leave on so passengers have two more seconds to get off they are off the plane i'm gonna go ahead and close my door onboarding complete select end flight so fs passengers end flight Flight was already registered, so that is where we want. We want from Flying Cloud to Duluth International. Number of passengers was two. The flight distance was 131 nautical miles. Our land speed was almost perfect at 65 knots. Uh, a little harder than I was hoping on the touchdown. It was nice instead of my last flight, which was a kiss to the to the ground. But whatever. Uh, very good flight, professionally done. That makes me happy, and we made money again. That is awesome, but man, we only made about the exact same amount of money as we did for that 10 minute tour flight, so I might just do more of those because, heck, this flight took, what, two hours as opposed to uh, my other flight, which was 20 minutes, so for the, for the same amount of money, I gotta change my prices or something. Overall, flight results were perfect. Ponent, pilot bonus was 180 points. I made a nice landing good flight no problems and i landed at the scheduled airport and i had no negatives so that is phenomenal apparently my reputation goes up a lot more though on these longer flights so that is good anyway that is the conclusion of my flight from flying cloud airport to duluth international airport my next flight i will be going somewhere in the northern peninsula or upper peninsula of michigan where exactly 
I am not sure, but I will be doing that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do like my videos, uh, please do subscribe. Also, uh, feel free to comment or message me if you do have any questions or want to see me fly to any particular locations or fly any particular aircraft. Uh, or if you just want to say hi, I would love to hear from you guys. So please do message or comment me and subscribe to the videos. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all next time.